Welcome. This is the first video in Module 1 where you'll be looking at rheology and coarse dispersions. Now before we get started I want you to imagine you finished a long day at uni and you're starving. You're on your way home and you pass by a corner store or tuck shop when they've got some great hot pies going cheap. You grab one and then reach over for their bottle of complimentary sauce because what's a pie without tomato sauce? But nothing happens. You shake it and shake it and squeeze it and then finally splat. Why does this happen? Well, you'll find out more about this phenomenon in this module. So, let's get started. In this video we'll be looking at the introductory sort of concepts of rheology, the very basics. By the end of the video you should be able to explain in basic terms what rheology is and be able to use the relevant terminology appropriately. So let's get started on what actually rheology is. Rheology is the science of how products or media flow. That is, in this module we'll be looking at the property of flow. Rheology is an important study for many fields of practice. So for example, engineers and mechanics would need to know how oils flow to determine their appropriateness to work as, for instance, an engine lubricant. A carpenter would need to know how varnish will flow as it coats wood or else they won't get a very professional finish. If you're into DIY, you'll know what I mean. So, in the pharmaceutical industry, we need to know how our creams and ointments and suspensions and injections will flow. And we'll look at the relevance of that at the end of this video. Some relevant terminology that we'll be covering in this video include deformation, elasticity, viscosity and kinematic viscosity, diffusion or diffusion coefficient, fluidity, shear stress, and rate of shear. We'll go through each one and see how each relates to the other. We'll start with deformation. Deformation is defined as the relative displacement of points in a body when a force is applied to it. So take this block for instance. If a force is applied to the top plane here, then the block will be deformed. This deformation can be both reversible and irreversible. Products that undergo reversible deformation will revert back to their original shape once the force has been removed. So let's remove this force here. And you'll see that the block has reverted back to its original shape. But let's take a real life example, a rubber band. When a force is applied to it, that rubber band will deform, it will stretch. Once the force is removed, the rubber band will revert back to its original shape. So this rubber band is said to have undergone reversible deformation. We can also say that the rubber band has elastic properties. Products that undergo irreversible deformation do not have elastic properties. Instead, they will flow when a force is applied to them. So let's look at the way liquids flow in a bit more detail. Viscosity is a measure of resistance to flow or a measure of thickness. The more resistant a fluid is to flowing, the more viscous it is. So, for example, cream is thicker than water. It's more resistant to flowing. Cream is therefore, or can therefore, be said to be more viscous than water. The viscosity of every system is defined by its coefficient of viscosity. We use the units poise or a capital P when describing coefficient of viscosity. Since many of the liquids that we use in pharmacy practice have really quite relatively low viscosity, they're often described using the unit centipoise or CP, which is a hundredth of a poise. Now let's look at the viscosity of some common liquids that we see in, in health. So, remember, the higher the number, the more viscous the system is. Okay, so out of these three different systems, we've got water, blood and oil. Water is the least viscous. Therefore, well, you'll see that the coefficient of viscosity of water is only one CP or one centipoise. Blood, which is a little bit more viscous, has a coefficient of viscosity of 10 CP. And olive oil, I'll let you have a think for a second. Do you think it's going to be higher or lower? Is olive oil more viscous than both of these substances, than blood and water? 
or is it less viscous? I hope you've said that it's more viscous because it is. Its coefficient of viscosity is considerably higher at 100 CP. Now, kinematic viscosity, it's the absolute viscosity of a liquid divided by its density at a defined temperature. It can be described using the unit Stoke or S. Well, what do we mean by this? Well, the viscosity of a system is going to change with temperature. As the temperature increases, the coefficient of viscosity will decrease. So, for instance, take this beaker of water here over a Bunsen burner that's not on. Its coefficient of viscosity will be close to 1, or will be 1. As you light up the, the Bunsen burner, you see a few bubbles occurring here. The water is heating up. Its coefficient of viscosity will be slightly less. And then over here, you've got the Bunsen burner going full blast and the water boiling over into gas. As it starts to boil, the resulting gas is much less viscous than the liquid water. So, the kinematic viscosity of the water to the left will be higher than the kinematic viscosity of the water boiling on the right. Fluidity is a measure of the thinness of a product. It's the reciprocal of viscosity, the opposite of it. So you can see that here, where fluidity is the same as 1 over coefficient of viscosity. It's the inverse. So whereas before we said that water is less viscous than cream, or cream is more viscous than water, here we can say that water is more fluid than cream, and cream is less fluid than water. Quite basic concepts. The diffusion coefficient measures how easily a substance diffuses through a medium. The diffusion coefficient is a physical constant and it depends on the molecular size and other properties of the diffusing substance, including temperature and pressure. So here we're looking at the very blue ink here. So where is my cursor? There you go. So the, the media here, the blue ink, is very thin, so its diffusion coefficient is going to be higher. Now you've got here a blue media which is really quite thick. It's a gel-like substance. Its viscosity is higher. And as we've got down here, because it's more viscous, its diffusion coefficient is going to be lower. Now let's move on to shear rate and rate of shear and the concepts that we need to know about those. Normal liquids like water will have a simple flow, that is, their flow rate is proportional to the forces that are exerted on them, on the water. The speed at which the water flows through a pipe or a hose, for instance, is directly proportional to the force pushing that water through. So, you can see this arrow is very thick. It's indicating that the force that's being applied to this body of water going through the garden hose is high or large and the arrow is very long, indicating that the speed is very fast of the water. In this hose below, you can see that the arrow is a very thin arrow. The diameter is very thin, indicating that the force pushing the water through is very little in comparison to the hose above. And similarly, the arrow length is very short, indicating that the speed at which the water is going through that hose is quite small as well quite little as well. And for example, a real life example, you've got the hose there, the force pushing this water out will be very little, the force pushing this water out will be very large, and if you're looking at, for instance, a fire engine's hose, that will be even stronger, and the, the water coming through will be even faster. So shear stress. Shear stress is defined as the force applied per unit area of a system. So in this hose, the force is applied on the cross section there, and this is indicated by F dash. The area there in green, the cross section, and the shear stress is that force divided by the area. But liquid generally doesn't flow with an even or, or identical velocity through a pipe, and this is due to the frictional forces between the pipe and the liquid. So 
the liquid will flow at slower velocity closer to the pipe's actual circumference and in the middle will flow faster. The difference in velocity between the liquid at the outside of the pipe and in the middle divided by their relative distance is known as the rate of shear or g. So the difference in velocity by the difference in their distance. Rate of shear g is proportional to shear stress, directly proportional. So we can put their respective formulas next to each other and the constant that connects them that relates them to one another is the coefficient of viscosity. So the more viscous a liquid is the more shear stress is required to push it through the cylinder and the greater the rate of shear that will be exerted on that system. A rheogram here is, is a plot of the rate of shear versus the shear stress a system experiences. Its gradient is the inverse of the coefficient of viscosity. You could also say that its gradient is the coefficient of fluidity. So what does this actually all mean? Well, from this video you know that high viscous systems or liquids need more shear stress to flow at the same rate as, for instance, a low viscous system. It would require less shear stress to be able to flow. So water requires less force to be poured through, for instance, one of these decorating pipes compared to thickened cream or decorating icing that's being used here. But what's the relevance of all this to a pharmacy practice? Well, rheological properties of a system can significantly affect both the user experience and the stability of the pharmaceutical preparation. So rheological properties will determine how pourable a suspension is, how easy it is to get it out of its container, the syringability of an injection, and the spreadability of a cream or ointment. But we'll look at that in more detail in upcoming videos. Just a note before we finish this video, many of the images in this video do not belong to the university or the author. They have been used to demonstrate a concept for educational purposes only, and full copyright belongs to the original owners.